Hi, this is Bar Fortin, owner of Bar Specialty Tools in my shop in McCall, Idaho. And today I'm going to show you how I sharpen a framing chisel on a series of diamond stones and water stones to get a chisel shaving sharp. Okay, the stones I have today, I have three water stones and I have three diamond stones. So this is a coarse diamond stone on one side, an extra coarse on the other, combination stone from uh, Diamond Machine Technologies. I have a 600 grit diamond stone in a matrix pattern and I have a 600 grit smooth diamond stone on base steel that's flat and then I have water stones. I have the 1500 grit water stone and I have a 5000 grit special water stone and then this is a the stone most people aren't going to have. This stone is pretty expensive and it's 25,000. It's a natural stone from Japan, but we're going to use it just to get our mirror polished today. I have a couple of things here. I have some simple green mixed up in a spray bottle, which is really nice for cleaning the diamond stones. I don't use it on the water stones much. I have uh, water with a little bit of antioxidant in it. You could use a water soluble oil or just plain water is fine. You might want to put a drop of detergent in it. Uh, to float the particles up off of these diamond stones. So the first thing I'm going to show you the beauty of the diamond stone is um, you can get your stones flat with this and that's the biggest problem people have with a diamond stone or with a water stone is that they get trough and then your edges get crooked and your backs get uh, flat. I've had guys send me tools before that they thought were flat and weren't because the stones really weren't flat. And you can see how this one still has a dip in it right here. And I haven't used it all that much. The um, most important thing in keeping a good framing chisel or any of your chisels cutting well is to keep the back flat. And I can't emphasize that much, that enough. Um, so I'm going to spray out this stone with some of that water and I'm going to put a little simple green on it. And I have here a framing chisel with the back that has been ground. And first thing I'll do is I'll just get a good steady, I'm going to have to be in a place where I get a good steady pressure on that. And I'm just going to go back and forth like this. What we're looking to get here is this. I'll clean this off and maybe the camera will pick it up. But we're starting to get these lines around the edge and on the front edge from this stone, which means this area is starting to get flat. Uh, now, my coarse diamond stone, and I'll go to my 600 grit diamond stone. And this takes a little time. I mean, you gotta put a little elbow grease in it. That's why it's nice to have a bench that's a little waist high or even just a tad lower. All right, now I'm going to the 600 stone it's actually pretty worn. You put your hand on this or rub it and you can't hardly feel any abrasive action at all. However, it's evenly spread out. Um, we're going to go over the, the back once again. It's really critical. And so as we work the back on this stone, we're getting rid of that dot pattern, believe it or not. That'll leave a little matrix right. on there. We're still working on the back, which might seem a little arduous, but it's well worth it. I've gone to this stone, the water stone, which I flattened on the diamond stone. So it's really nice and slick. You can just see how flat that is. So we're, we're going to start with the same motion. And you can change your motion up just to see what kind of scratch pattern you're getting as well. In other words, you can go in circles if you want. But whatever you do, now the don't pick back up on is it. way harder than the edge. It really is. It's the one place you want to spend a lot of time. All right, now that we have the back nice and flat, we're going to go ahead and put a big nick in there. Yeah, that's pretty bad. By digging that edge, like hitting a nail, for instance, you know, that's a pretty good little bite into that edge. So, first thing I'm going to do is hit that back again, and it's going to pop pretty quick. And it came right back. So we're going to spend a little time on this guy. And a little.
little time on the 600. Because every time you do this, you you gain. You know, you're you're getting you're getting good good things on the bottom. Right now, I'm going to set this stone down. I'm going to find my happy place, which is between the front and the back. Okay. I'm going to find that spot between the heel and the toe. You can rock it back and forth and see it. And there it is. And I'm just going to bring it up just a little bit. Now, my technique is a little different in that I'll drop the chisel as I go. I'll start at about 30. Okay, I'll start there. And I'll drop. Now this is, I put a pretty, <laughs> pretty big, pretty big ding in here. Normally if, you know, it was my chisel in my shop, I would have taken the time to probably throw that on the grinder. However, if you're out working on a timber frame and you do that, hit metal or something, you can get that out of there. Also by rolling down as I go, I'm backing that edge up. If you get that edge too thin, I don't care what kind of chisel it is. You know, Japanese chisels tend to be really steep. They can go up to 40 degrees, some of them. Um, we like to end up at about 30 with our micro bevel rolled in at 30. So we're starting the micro bevel here. You can hear that thing cutting. I'm dropping down. And you can see that I'm, I've got I have a pretty big edge on there at this point. However, my little ding there is almost So out. now, if I'm a little out of square on my edge, I can start to just subtly put a little more pressure left or right on the blade with my palm. You can see it roll there. You don't want to do it that much. It's just almost more thinking about it, if that makes sense. You're just putting a little bit more weight pressure on the left side or the right side. And it, it's something that takes time and you know some experience, but don't be afraid to try it. You can even get some of your cheaper, you know, older chisels and go ahead and get your edge all squared up. So now we're down to you know a straight edge, no more nick. And we have a fairly large bevel, but this bevel as it rolls up in like this. As you can see, it's pretty big and then rolls into the, into the rest of the edge. That's a really tough edge. That edge will take a lot of punishment. And for timber framing, that's a good thing. So now I'm going to okay, move down to the next stone. We're going to the 600 grit diamond next. And one thing that you can do is you can always take a Sharpie and you can block out your edge. And that way you can see where you are. When you get on your stone, you can just go right to it by tape. One stroke, and I can kind of see what's going on. You can see how the matrix started to cut it, you know, here, 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 here. But I'm okay on the, as far as getting across it evenly. So that's good. That's what we wanted to see. So now, it won't take long with a diamond 600 to get that. Okay, now we're into the water stones, and the water stones won't take very long on the edge either. It, it's not like the back. You're not hitting that huge surface like you're when you're doing a back. That's a lot of metal to have to get flat. So same, same. And you know, it's nice to have it, either your stone screwed down or have little blocks screwed front and back. This one is just sitting here, but it's flat enough that it doesn't really want to move around. And you can see how nice and flat that is. And it's just, it's really great. And that's from our diamond stone. And so that's giving us that really nice, you know, we're starting to get a little mirror polish on there. And that's what we're after. We're after a mirror polish. Now, like I said, this is a pretty radical bevel because we had that big nick in there. But you can see the nick is gone. The chisel will be really, really functional and have a very, very tough edge when we're finished. So that next uh, stone will be the next water stone. And that's going to be this guy here. 
And these are from Japan Woodworker. Um, these are some nice stones. This one may move around just a little bit. I don't normally use this stone for this um, in this fashion. And this stone's pretty darn soft. See, I'm already troughing it out a little bit. But I'm also, I can tell I'm getting that good mirror polish on there. It's coming. Look at that. See, it's starting to look like a mirror. You can see how bright that is on the front edge. Now, right now, I'm sure this thing will shave, no problem. Yep, there it is, right there. You can see that hair just popping off of there. So, we didn't distort the edge at all with a troughed water stone, and we managed to get the nick out, and we got our back flat. And if you want, you can go one step further. Now this is for guys that maybe have some stones that are really, really fine. I mean, this, this is a sword polishing stone, believe it or not. And you can hear it. There's really hardly any sound at all from this guy. But it gives you just an absolutely beautiful mirror polish. And you see that that came up? That peeled off of there, that's nice. You get that in there, that's a little slurry, that's a little helper. All right, so I don't have, I'm not a real hairy guy, but uh, look at that. That's just jumping off of there. Check it out. That is one very sharp chisel.